This is the beginning, or at least it just was the beginning, right at the first frame of the video. The moment when the first pixel of the screen turned on, the light traveled to my eyes, filtered through my consciousness and popped out the other end somehow is now. But what about the real now, before any delays happened? The now when the first pixel of the screen turned on, isn't that the beginning? Whoa. Well, I can show that now to you. And so let's try this again. The beginning is now. It's darkness. Only once light arrives can we see anything, and light doesn't move infinitely fast. It moves about one foot per nanosecond. And it's often called the universal speed limit, because nothing can move any faster. But it should really be called the speed of now. It seems like things are happening around us all the time. But wouldn't it be truer to say that things happened around us? That we're only now experiencing? So I'm here in the park with you, and things are happening around us. There's squirrels and trees and kids, and all of it is taking some time to arrive here. It's all some distance away, and so the light that bounces off the tree or that hits the sky and comes toward my eyes, it takes some time to get to you and me. But if everything, literally everything, the cell signals, the gravitational waves, the quantum fields that make reality, if they all move at the speed of light, then what does it mean to share a moment? Imagine that a cloud walks into a subway train trying to get uptown. Imagine that they're feeling under the weather. Someone's filming an ultra slow-mo on the platform. At the speed of light and relative to the train, the flash moves outwards in all directions, hitting the front and back of the train at the same instant. Outside the train, the light moves relative to the platform, getting to the back of the train first and then the front of the train. Because the light took a different time to arrive for each observer, they would never be able to agree on what actually happened. Their experience of the same moment would be completely different. Which might make you wonder, which of these was real? You might say, what the heck? These circles are doing totally different things. Why is the center of the light circle stationary on the train? And stationary when seen from the platform? Shouldn't the light circle be moving with the train when seen from the platform? Weirdly, no. Because if it did, the front of it would be moving faster than the speed of light. Instead, the center of any light pulse is stationary for each and every observer anywhere. To truly share the experience of a moment with someone, you must be co-moving or you will forever disagree on the ordering of events in the universe around you. Now to actually see that happen, you would need a train going 99.9998% the speed of light, or a slow-mo camera filming at 287 trillion frames per second. But this is happening all the time. Time is relative for observers in relative motion. What about for stationary observers, like two people sitting next to one another? Is there any truth to this idea that physically we share a moment together? Or at the other extreme, do we really exist in separate universes? Maybe we can find out by thinking of places in space that are much farther than me and you, that have a much longer time delay, places far beyond the blue sky above. The light that will reach us tonight from this cloud of gas and dust in space departed 270 years before the first telescope was invented, just before the Black Plague swept across Europe.
This nebula's light was emitted as humans wrote the first notated songs and developed the first alphabets. Light that arrives tonight. This cloud's light left 10,000 years before the first human cities were built, just as human settlers spread across the vast Americas. But let's look a bit further, beyond the Milky Way. This is Andromeda, the closest major galaxy to our own. And tonight we see light from it which left before humans existed. Around the time the first animals anything quite like us evolved, like Homo erectus and Homo habilis. Beyond our local group of galaxies, things are much, much older. Every dot in this picture is a galaxy. Each the residence of billions of stars whose light arrives to us from a time eight billion years before the solar system and the Earth formed. If you look further, you don't see galaxies anymore. You're back to seeing clouds. But this time, you're seeing the first cloud in the universe, the cloud of fire at the beginning when you when you look out into the cosmos and you look out to the deepest parts of the cosmos, you're looking at the time when the universe was this plasma. Yeah, so at that time it was it was protons and there were electrons that were separate. The, the universe was too hot and dense for protons and electrons to combine to form mm. atoms. It's kind of like trying to look through a fire. You can't see through the fire mm. because it's it's there's a, a, a point at which the light is able to to stream freely mm. and deeper than that it's bouncing around and, and it's opaque. As the universe expanded that plasma cooled and that set up the conditions for the protons and electrons to meet and create stable uh, neutral atoms. Mm. That process of going from plasma to neutral gas is called recombination. Right before that moment, when protons and electrons combined, photons, light, was just bouncing around everywhere. It was like being deep inside of a fog, where, you know, you emit some light in one place in the fog and it can't travel very far through it because it's scattering all over the place. But when the protons and electrons did combine, it coalesced that everywhere fireball fog into something that light could travel through unimpeded. And that light is the cosmic microwave background. The light arriving now from way out there at the oldest part of the universe is the light that left when protons and electrons combined. That, so that moment occurred at 380,000 years after the beginning, whatever the beginning was. Gotcha. And when those when those first neutral hydrogen atoms form, those then form clouds of gas mm. that then coalesce into galaxies and, and stars and things like that. Mm. Um, first stars in the universe. First stars in the universe, <laughs> Oh my yeah. God. And so the, yeah. the hydrogen in the water in the tea yeah. was formed at, the, the neutral hydrogen was formed at that, that transition mm. from plasma to gas, that recombination era. Wow. Um, and so it's straight from the Big Bang, basically. It, this, didn't, this didn't form in stars. Cheers to the Big Bang. <laughs> the Big Bang makes it sound like it happened in one place. A big explosion that happened in one point in space. But the truth is much weirder. The Big Bang happened everywhere, all at once. And at the edge of the universe, what we're seeing is the revealing of new neighborhoods of the universe that we've never seen before. The center of what's observable in the universe is where you are, and its edge moves with time. It can make more sense when you think of a smaller example. So let's say Manhattan is the entire observable universe, which is 
apparently what some New Yorkers believe. <laughs> anyway, you'd be here in Central Park, and when you looked out towards downtown, instead of seeing buildings out there, you'd see centuries and millennia every block. You'd see back to the time of the founding of the United States, and then the centuries of Lenape land stewardship, and way past that, the time of the dinosaurs. And way past that, you'd see the beginning of the universe as a kind of circular fog around where you are in the universe. And as time would pass, the fog would be moving farther and farther. Now imagine if we were in downtown, looking uptown at Central Park. You wouldn't see Central Park the same. It would be far in the past. And some of what was observable in the universe before would no longer be from that new perspective. There would be both parts of the universe shared and parts of the universe that you could only see from either perspective. Now, what if we rewind the clock of these mini universes back to when the circles were smaller, when downtown and Central Park were outside of each other's observable universes, which means that nothing from Central Park has yet physically interacted with downtown and no light, gravity, quantum fields, anything from downtown has yet to influence Central Park. It's not much of a stretch to say that if two places in the universe cannot interact, then they are essentially their own universes. But still, we believe that there is a universe, a cohesive single entity in which both observers exist. The trouble is, there's no observable evidence to support it until time has passed enough for them to see each other. And so it is with our universe. Earth is really small in the grand scheme of things, meaning all humans on Earth practically share the same observable universe. But there are places still physically disconnected from our place in space. Planets, galaxies, moons, Places where light and causality haven't had the time to arrive to us yet. No physical phenomena are shared between places until they're observable. And even then, with delays. Time is relative to where you are in the universe and how you're moving through it. And every event in the universe propagates at the speed of now. To be dislocated in space is to be dislocated in time. To truly share a moment with someone, we'd have to truly share a place in space. Something we could never do other than to be another person. And I guess in a funny way, that's kind of what empathy is. To empathize with someone is to have a heartfelt imagination of what life is like in their shoes. What it's like to see from their universe. But it's always an imagination. We can only know what's arriving now from everywhere around us. And what's arriving now from every distance away from you is kind of just as fresh, just as real as you are. The beginning is now. The universe hasn't stopped starting since it began. It's right there in the cosmic background radiation arriving now from our perspective. And what now?